So do you know what the main thing that Jesus' disciples wanted to learn from him was? It wasn't how to walk in power. It wasn't how to preach. It wasn't even how to do miracles, but it was how to pray. So today, we are going to be breaking down all the prayer lessons that we can learn from the life of Jesus so that you can start praying in no time. So stay tuned. What's up, everybody? This is Ronnie. And Mel. And on this channel, we give you weekly tools and inspiration to help you find God and walk with Him in your daily life. So if that's something you need, consider subscribing. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Also, we have a free gift for you at the end of this video that will help you to grow in prayer. So make sure you don't miss it. And if you're a Christian, you know that the main point of prayer isn't just asking for things, but connecting with God. And no one modeled this better than Jesus. So let's jump in and see what we can learn from his prayer life. So in Luke 11, we actually see Jesus sitting down with his disciples and they're asking him questions. And I don't know about you, but if I were there, I'd probably be all, hey Jesus, where do you get your power? How do you heal people the way that you do? How do you do all these miracles and preach with such authority? But no, that's not what they asked. Jesus' disciples were able to see that all of his power came from one thing, his prayer life. That it was Jesus' connection and relationship to his Father that allowed him to walk in the power of God. So instead, they asked him, teach us to pray. So come take a journey with us through the Gospels as we see how Jesus modeled how we, his disciples here on the earth today, can follow him in the way we pray. The first thing that we see is Jesus prayed to his Father. He wasn't just praying to the air or to some force of nature. He was talking to God, his Father. He knew the character and the heart of his father, and he knew his identity and place as a son. So let's take a look at some examples. Luke 11, 2, Jesus said, this is how you should pray, Father. John 11, 41 to 42, Father, I thank you that you've heard me, and I know that you always hear me. John 12, 27 to 28, Father, save me from this hour, and Father, glorify your name. And Jesus specifically says Father six times in his famous prayer of John 17. So obviously Jesus knew who he was talking to. This means that we want to know our identity as sons and daughters, and we want to know the nature and the character of our Father. The more that we see what he's like as revealed in the Bible, the more that we'll have confidence to know what he's like and to approach him. The next thing that we see is that Jesus prayed alone or in secret. Luke 5, 16 says that he often withdrew into the wilderness alone to pray. And Mark 1, talks about Jesus departing into a solitary place to pray. So it's clear Jesus got alone with him and his father in the place of prayer, but it was intentional. It says he withdrew, he went out. And with all the distractions that we have in today's life, even with some good things, we really have to fight to pull away to spend time with him. And also Jesus taught us to pray in Matthew 6, 6. And in it, he says, but you, when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. For your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. So figure out what shutting the door looks like for you. For me, that often means shutting off the phone, putting away the to-do list, maybe even getting out and going to a coffee shop. Whatever it looks like for you, figure out what you need to do to be alone with God. Another thing that we see Jesus do is praying early. Mark 1.35 says, very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went out to a solitary place where he prayed. So let's face it, we're all busy, life can get crazy, so that's why the mornings can be the best times to get alone with God. One of my favorite quotes is from J. Hudson Taylor, who was a missionary to China. He said this, May the sun never arise on China without finding me in prayer. And I just love that picture. The Bible says that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the earth, looking for those whose hearts are loyal to him. And I just love the thought that maybe God could look down upon the earth and find a people who are already looking back at him. Jesus also prayed often. In Luke 5, 16, we see that Jesus often withdrew and prayed. And obviously we have many examples of him praying. He even taught us in John 15 that we were to abide in him and to live completely connected to him. The next thing is that Jesus prayed for direction before big decisions or big moments in his life. Before choosing his 12 disciples, Luke 6, 12 tells us that Jesus went out to a mountainside to pray and he spent the night praying to God. We also see him doing this the night before he chose to give his life on the cross. So we see that Jesus spent significant time before these important decisions and so should we. 
If you need direction in your life or you're trying to make some big decisions, don't do it without God. Give yourself the prayer so you can hear him and do his will and not yours. We also see in scripture that Jesus prayed for others. We see tons of examples of him praying for the sick, praying for those who needed deliverance, and we even see him blessing little children. And Jesus gave his disciples and you and me the same commission. One of the most comforting things for believers is that Jesus prayed for his disciples to be able to stand in trials and tribulations. In Luke 22, Jesus says to Peter, Satan has asked to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith would not fail. And even now he is praying for you. He desires that we would stand strong in him and walk in love towards others. And we see his prayers for us all through the Bible. So not only did Jesus pray alone, but he also prayed with others. This is what we can call corporate prayer or gathering together to agree with God. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. And we often see him gathering a few of his disciples to go out with him and pray. It's also important to note that the early church kept doing this after Jesus' death and resurrection. All through the book of Acts we see they all joined together constantly in prayer. So we encourage you, start a prayer meeting, whether it's at school, whether it's in your workplace, at your church, or with a small group. Even if it's only once a week, even if there's only a few of you there, Jesus loves it when we gather together to pray to him. Another thing that Jesus did was pray that power would be released in his ministry. He prayed at his baptism when the Holy Spirit descended on him before he began his early ministry and before he did his miracles all through the land of Israel. Another thing that we see is Jesus praying all night to God after he preached and he did miracles. Many times the crowds even were trying to get to him to make him king and he would have to kind of fight his way out to get away from the people and to go and be with his father. While it doesn't necessarily say why Jesus did this in scripture, I think it's important after we minister for the Lord to go and hear what he says rather than what the crowd say. If we're looking for the praise of the people, we can either become discouraged or we can become puffed up in pride depending on how we do. But the only voice that matters is God's and we wanna please him, not necessarily give the crowds everything that they want. So going to him after we minister reminds us that all power comes from him and we can thank him for all that he has done. We also see that Jesus prayed from the Bible. Many times we see Jesus quoting verses from the Bible as he prayed to God and we ought to do the same. He even prayed, not my will be done, but yours be done. In our own praying, we want to pray for God's will from the truths laid out in scripture. Jesus also prayed with passion. The best example of this is John 17, where right before the cross, he's just laying his heart before the Father. His prayers weren't just to check the box or to just have some list memorized. He actually cared about God's glory and about others. And so his prayers were full of passion for God and compassion for others. So in our praying, we really want it to be a real heart connect with God and what we're praying about. And if you feel like you don't have that, just ask him. God loves to let us feel what he feels about things so we can agree with him and what he wants to do. Another thing that Jesus did was pray with faith and persistence. He knew that all power belonged to God, so he prayed with faith knowing that God was able. He also taught us to pray and not to give up, which is probably why he spent some nights hours in prayer. Keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And the last thing that we see is that Jesus prayed knowing that his prayers wouldn't always be answered the way that he hoped. In Matthew 26, we actually see Jesus praying to God right before he goes to the cross. And he actually prayed that he wouldn't have to go through it. But he surrendered the outcome to God knowing that God knew better. We don't always know why God does things the way that he does, but we always can trust that he knows what he's doing and he's writing a story that will make sense in the end. Well, that was a lot, but there are so many amazing things about the way that Jesus prayed that we can learn from. He is the model, and so we wanna follow Jesus in every area of our lives, including our prayer life. So let's recap real quick. Jesus prayed to his father, he prayed in secret, he prayed early, he prayed often, he prayed for direction, he prayed for others and with others. We also see Jesus prayed before and after power was released in his ministry. He prayed the Bible or God's will. He prayed with passion. He prayed with faith and persistence. And he prayed knowing his prayers wouldn't always be answered as he expected. And to help you guys grow in prayer, we actually made you guys a prayer pack full of our favorite tools, including some of the prayers that Jesus prayed. All you have to do is click the link in our description and you can download it for free.
So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you think it might help someone you know, make sure to share it because you never know the difference that you can make in someone else's life. And we want to hear from you guys, so be sure to comment below and let us know. What is one thing that you can take away from today's teaching that you can implement in your own prayer life? So let us know down below. So we hope that this continues to help you on your journey to find God and walk with Him, and we will see you next time.